<clears throat> Look at this man. If you saw him in a restaurant, would you be able to tell what he does for a living? Is he a bank president, an atomic scientist, or a floor walker at Macy's? What would you say if he asked, What's my line? Yes, here's television's newest game, a chance to play detective and spot the occupations of all kinds of people as they come before our camera. You will have a chance to match your observation skills with our panel of experts for the next half hour as we invite you to play What's My Line? And now let's meet our lineup of distinguished personalities whose lines you probably already know. First, the distinguished neuropsychiatrist, Dr. Richard Hoffman. And who's that on your right, Dr. Hoffman? On my right, Louis Antemeyer, my favorite disc jockey from Parnassus. <laughs> Parnassus yet? The dick you know very well that I live in Brooklyn. And on my right, that dynamic actress and mistress of ceremonies, Arlene Francis. Thank you. And on my right, your favorite Toastmaster, my favorite raconteur, and a favorite son of New Jersey, Governor Hoffman. Thank you, Arlene. And on my right, the suave news analyst and commentator and our moderator, Mr. John Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to What's My Line. You're going to see people from many varied and perhaps unexpected occupations who are here to baffle our panel of experts and thus win some prize money for themselves. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before our panel a little bit later on in the show. But now to get things rolling, I want the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they will have to spot. So will you sign in, please, miss? Caroline. W-E-S-T-O-N. Caroline Weston. Well, fine. Miss Weston, I take it it is miss, is it? Will you stand here by this chair for just a moment? Tell us, first of all, where you live. Please. Queen, that's out on Long Island. Yes, sir. Part of New York City. Well, you should have some friends out in our audience tonight, Ben. Does this panel bother you? Does it look formidable? <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> Nothing to be afraid of at all. No, I'm going to let you have a closer look at them, and they want a closer look at you. So will you walk over to the end of the panel line there, and any reasonable demands they make on you, why, meet them. They won't, may want to shake hands with you. Yes, like I'd that. like to shake hands with you. You're not nervous, are you? You needn't be. Do you mind just standing on one foot for a moment? And now shut your eyes and do it. And touch the tip of your nose. Well, okay. <laughs> and do something for me, honey. Touch that. Uh -huh. Good. Well, I think they've put you through the ringer enough. You come over here and sit down beside me, Miss Weston, if you will. Now, uh, you probably haven't heard about this, but on the basis of your handwriting, what you said, how you said it, and this close look that the panel has had at you, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll start the free guesses with uh, Governor Hoffman. I think Miss Weston is a playground instructor. A playground instructor, Miss uh, Francis? Well, I'm sort of on your side. I think she's a girl athlete, anyway. Well, that's pretty interesting. And so what about you, Mr. Undermire? I think she does research work in rainfall in North Dakota. <laughs> does it have to be North Dakota? It does. How about you, Dr. Hoffman? Well, I'd put her into a warmer place than that. Uh, I think that she is in the educational system. In the educational system. Well, that covers an awful lot of territory, but now we'll let our viewers at home and our audience here in the theater get a closer look at Miss Weston. At the same time, they will find out what her line is. Panel, you know the rules. In turn, you can ask questions of Miss Weston. The answers to receive, or rather the answers to be given as yes or no in almost all instances. When you get a no answer, it costs the panel $5. Ten no's and you've lost the game. Ten no's and our challenger has won $50 and won the game. Now we give you one bit of help before we start the general questioning. Miss Weston is salary. Now I think since the fair sex to the fair, Miss Francis, you'll begin the general questioning. Uh, your salary. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Miss Weston? Yes. You do? You yes. speak and, up a bit, Miss uh, Francis, and try to yes, throw these questions up. fast and <laughs> Get out, you girl. Uh, uh, you said that it was interesting when I said that she was a girl athlete at some time, so I'm going to stay on that line, kind of, John. I'm going to find out if uh, you are interested in athletics. Yes. You are. Uh, do you, uh, in your work, uh, work with a group of people? 
Uh, Are you a lone athlete? <laughs> <laughs> well, now this, um, the question isn't specific enough. It isn't Let specific us say enough. that in the general practice of, of her profession, the whole thing, she might work with other people. Yes. Yes. I mean, if she were a lady wrestler, she'd work with somebody. Yeah, she would. Um, uh, do you uh, use all of your, uh, all the muscles of your body in the kind of athletics that you are uh, engaged in? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Weston, what do you say? Yes. yes. Every muscle is working, ears and all, fellas, don't forget. Point of me. Do you, uh, uh, are your, uh, is your athletic uh, work something that uh, uh, covers a lot of ground? Yes. Covers a lot of ground. Uh, do you use uh, any kind of apparatus to help you in your particular line of athletic work? I mean by that, do you have to wear anything on your feet or your hands or your head? No. Nothing. Uh -huh. uh -oh. yeah. What kind of athletic that's, is that? That's no one down and nine to go. And Mr. Rundabout, you look very eager. Get to it. I am very eager because Miss Francis has given me so many leads. Thank you. Uh, as an athletic question mark, uh, do you deal equally with both sexes or more with women, let us say? No. Well, the question... Uh... All right. Uh, do you deal with both sexes? Yes. Do you deal more with women than with men? Yes. Uh, in your line of entertainment, athletics, or sports, uh, uh, do you come in physical contact with people? Yes. Uh, do you handle them? I mean, do you, yeah. handle, them, do you handle them roughly? Do you ha uh, for instance, instead of a cosmetician where you handle them gently, do you handle them roughly? Yes. <clears throat> Would you be a female wrestler? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. Weston. I'm afraid you didn't do too well, but you did give our panel a good hard contest and you won yourself only five dollars in prize money. Congratulations, panel. Any postmortem? No, aren't you glad you met her up here though, instead of in the ring, Louis? I'm glad I met you. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. Now let's move on to our next challenger. Would you check in, please, sir? Yes, sir. Write in a large hand so that uh, our panel can get some benefit. Edward? Edward Eisen, is that right, sir? That's Will right. you come over here and stand beside me for just a moment? Uh, first of all, tell us um, where you live. Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Uh-oh. I was waiting for that. That usually brings loud gales of applause. Well, Mr. Eisen, you've had a look at this panel. Do you think it looks very formidable? I'm afraid that's psychiatrist. You're afraid of psychiatrist. <laughs> well, you get over, get over good and close to him. I want you to walk up the line of the panel, if you will. Any reasonable requests made, meet them. Don't worry, I'll keep you standing. <laughs> Mr. Uh, uh, oh, do you want to ask him? Go ahead. Plus yes, old dam, I always say. Well, I just wondered if Mr. Eisen would be good enough to roll up the leg of his trousers. <laughs> I know it oh, sounds I'm weird. I'm afraid that's I reasonable, Mr. Eisen. Yeah. Don't so what are you asking Francis him for? Ask your wife. Miss Francis ways of going oh. about things. Is it all right? Yes. Is it all right, little woman? I just want to see if you're wearing garters. Yes, you are. Of that. No. Oh, he's, oh. Not. no, he's not. He's not. Elastic top socks. Elastic top socks. Uh, Anybody else want to uh, query uh, Mr. Eisen? Could I find out whether Mr. Eisen, like his socks, is self-supporting? Oh, well, you'll find out about that <laughs> later on. <laughs> Thank you very much for the pun, quip, or what have we. Mr. Eisen, you come on back here and sit down next to me. They don't seem to be able to learn much from your close presence. You now, as you might have noticed on our first challenger, at this point, on the basis of your handwriting, what you said, how you say it, and the close look they just had at you, the panel gets a free guess as to your line. All right, so you begin the free guesses again, uh, Governor Hoffman. Well, I've been looking at those glasses. I, I think he's got poor eyesight. He must be a baseball umpire. A baseball <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm afraid that's not right. What about you, Miss Francis? I think the glasses look as though he might be an optician. An optician? That's not right either. Mr. Rodemeyer? He is the principal of the East Patterson High School. Principal of East Patterson High School, oh, even if he lives in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Well, Dr. Hoffman, what well, about you? that misleading information, I think that he's a probation officer. A probation officer. Well, you perhaps know more about these things than I do, Dr. Hoffman. <laughs> well, now that you've all had a free guess, not guessed correctly, uh, we'll let our viewers at home get a really close look at Mr. Eisen. At the same time, they will find out what his line is. Panel, you know the rules. In just a moment, you can begin to ask questions in turn. Every no answer gets a $5 penalty and 10 no's and you've lost the game. Well, Mr. Eisen, are you all ready for this contest? 
as ready as they'll ever be. Good. Well, <laughs> Mr. Eisen, uh, as the last bit of help you're going to get from me is salaried. Uh, Mr. Rondemeyer, I suppose you start, start the general question. Is Mr. Eisen's work industrial rather than... At Mr. Eisen. Mr. Eisen, Mr. Eisen is your work, uh, generally speaking, industrial rather than artistic or creative? I would say it's not industrial. It is not. I lose five dollars. Uh, well, I'm, no, I'm going, to, I'm going to say you start the questioning all over again, because I think <laughs> when be you give us such to, a broad area... Out. Yeah, we'll leave, we'll leave you uh, for the moment where you started. Go back and start all over again. It's your a little work more specific. in the field of business rather than the field of entertainment, let us say? Well, the answer is no. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> well, well, you don't get another start. Very good answer. It's basically yes. As between the two fields of entertainment, and uh, business, business, the answer would be yes. Although I must say that a lot of people get entertainment of a sort from Mr. Eisen. <laughs> I'll be, very, I'll but, uh, be very happy to pass all this on to my good friend, Dr. Hoffman. All right, then with no penalty, we'll pass on to Dr. Hoffman. And I could do a good deal with hypnosis, I think, here, because it's <laughs> ambiguous so far. But tell me, do you have to have a special talent to practice your particular profession? I would say yes. In other words, it's a gift to a certain degree. Well, <laughs> no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say it would To a very slight get. degree, we'll put it that way. Uh, Go ahead, Doctor. Uh, do you work with your brains more than you do with your hands? I think so. Notice I use brains in the plural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you have anyone assisting you in your work? No, not necessarily. Well, uh, oh, not necessarily. You might have, might you not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, the piano uh, for you or something. Yeah, well, but now don't be misled. The questions are much too general, Dr. Hoffman. He doesn't necessarily need assistance while he is performing his specific function. That is what I think Mr. Eisen means. As a matter of fact, I think there's been so much ambiguity in the questions, we'll charge you $5. It's one down and nine to go. Dr. Hoffman, uh, you don't mind passing the question no, on I'll to take Governor cigarette. Hoffman. Do you, uh, did you work in an office? It uh, could be in an office, but not necessarily. Uh, we'll take yes uh, for the answer. He's the you, most you double have, talking man. You have, a, so you, you, have a, you have a headquarters. Now, do your clients or customers or patients come to you generally? They could, or they could. They could, or they could. Some do and some don't. Some do and some don't. Yes. I think what we've arrived at here, Governor well, Hoffman, is that he can work in the office, or he may on occasion go out to do the same work outside of the office. In, in, your, in your work, you uh, generally use, would you say you use your voice and your brains more than your hands? I think yes, although my hands are necessary, too. Well, after these... Uh, uh, do, after these people come in contact with you, your clients or patients or whatever they may be, uh, when they leave you, are they benefited? Do they become happier? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> okay. Let's do now a piece to go. Well, e evidently he does deal with people, and it's a big joke that they don't feel any better. <laughs> This man could be any number of people. Well, they may not feel better, but does it benefit them? Well, yes, I would say in the long run, in, in the long view of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. I call for a consultation. Well, you're going to have 20 seconds for a consultation. Quick, quick, quick. Arlene, Arlene, yeah. Yeah. Arlene, if it doesn't benefit them, but he deals with people, yeah. and in the long run, something, couldn't he be an undertaker? Uh -oh. Yes, he could. That might be your, that might he be very your well could. He could be a mortician, though he's awfully cheerful looking for that kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> may I, may I, may I now ask a question? No, I, I'm sorry, oh, well, but right, Ms. Francis is doing the questioning. The consultation is over. Continue, Ms. Francis. All right, I'm going to use you as a god. Um, uh, you, uh, in your work, do you deal with sad people, mostly? <laughs> no. No, oh, I think we'll people. call that uh, three down and seven to go. The people might be sad, but not necessarily <laughs> so, and not for the kind of reasons I think you would like to follow. Mr. Uh, I wanted to say to Miss Francis in rebuke that morticians are apt to be happy people. I didn't they mean are, him. They I are mean, not Let's people not have all among the panel. Let's but get the to the question. But the customer must please. look like the Dickens. I would I like to see you later. <laughs> Mr. Rademeyer, when you get to the question, yes. I'm only going to give you two more uh, minutes you to deal discover. with people, living people? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You do. Are they your Are they your main subject? I would say yes. You would say yes. Uh, you would say yes. Uh, are they people who are sick when they come to you? 
how they sick after they leave. No. Poor <laughs> <laughs> uh, down. They're sick after they leave. No. You are a psychologist? I'm sorry, Mr. Undermeyer. Four down and six to go. <laughs> Dr. Hoffman. Well, are they uncomfortable when they come to you? I wish I could say no, but I have to say yes. <laughs> and uh, your work benefits them to a certain degree? I think so, yes. And you work with a part of their body? No, not... Uh, uh, five down and five to go. Governor Hoffman, I'm going to give you 30 seconds more to discover do what Mr. Eisen's line is. Do you work for a public that's against a private agency? Yes. For a public agency? Are you in government? Yes. Are you... Have you anything to do with statistics? To a certain extent. Not you know, the... Statistician is a fact man. Nobody loves a fact man. You know that, don't you? <laughs> Do you, Nobody loves the fact, man. Do you, uh, that. do you, in any sense, handle? Do you handle money that is not your own? No. That's uh, six down and four to go. I'll allow you ten seconds for consultation and two more questions. Yes. You know what this fellow is? Yes. He's an income tax collector. Tax collector. Right. All right. Now, Miss Francis, will you continue yes, with the so question, go, please? Yes. Uh, I, I will follow out uh, Governor Hoffman's line. And Louis's line too. And, and everybody, Louis's line, and, and everybody's line. And I hope I can follow your line. Uh, uh, I knew a uh, Mr. Eisen that was a, uh, a tax collector, and he is my tax collector. I know you're not he because I just saw him. <laughs> but is that your line? Yes, I think you accept that. Thank you. Thank you. At least six. No, thirty dollars goes to Mr. Eisen. Thanks for being a guest on what? My line. Okay. Well, panel, I'm a little bit ashamed of you. I thought you'd get that much quiz. It's almost income tax time. Well, now, are they an away income tax collector taxes. collect money? Well, you can hit me over oh, the head after we get through the show. Well, now, welcome <laughs> to a special feature of our show, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. We call him Mr. X, uh, mostly because the experts would recognize our guest the moment he walked out on the stage. So will our guest please put the blindfolds on, which are in front of you? Now, in this particular case, it's not so much what's my line as who is it? Those of you who are watching at home and uh, those of you who are in the theater with us will recognize our mystery celebrity in just a moment, but it's up to the panel to find out for themselves. Are all those Where blinds does, on? Uh -huh. Where does Arlene get them? All the blinds are on, then fine. Will our mystery celebrity please sign in? Hello. He's a silent celebrity, isn't he? He's going to remain silent. Mr. Jack? <laughs> and his violin. Mr. X. All right, Mr. X, will you come over here and sit down and sign us, please? All right, panel, on, uh, I don't think there's any point in giving you a wild guess, so we'll begin the general questioning right away to see if you can discover who our mystery celebrity is. Miss Francis, you may begin. Well, the first thing to ask a celebrity is if he is in show business. Are you in show business, Mr. Celebrity? I'm connected with it. You are? Uh, do you... Uh, you're connected with it. Uh, does this imply that perhaps uh, you come from a long line of show business people, maybe? No. Nope. Do you? No. Nope. That's one down and uh, nine to uh, go, uh, and we move on to <laughs> Mr. Andermeyer. You are in the entertainment field broadly, but not too broadly speaking, yes? I'm in the entertainment field. Have you ever appeared on radio or television? Yes. Have you five daughters? <laughs> <laughs> that is an unfair question, but I would say that, uh, for the record, no. That's that. Two down and eight to go, and Dr. Hoffman, you're is, next. Is that soft voice of yours due to training, or does it, or does it come to you naturally or by heredity? Very difficult to answer, sir. And cannot be answered yes or no, Mr. Oh, Dr. Well, Hoffman. Well, then I'll say, uh, it's, uh... Have you ever spoken in public? Yes, I have. Are you ambitious? <laughs> or ambiguous? <laughs> the question is, are you ambitious, Mr. Ed? I am ambitious in my fields of endeavor. You should be made of sterner stuff. Uh, <laughs> have you, uh, let's say, political aspirations? No, I have no political aspirations. That's three down and seven to go, and we move on to the politician, Governor Hoffman. Yeah. Are you a Republican? 
I am a registered Democrat uh, with independence of choice of voting. Four down and six to go. Four down and six to go. I don't think we can have any consultation on this. We've got to move along with it, Miss Francis. Anyway, I detect something New England about this gentleman. I do. A little Harvard. Touch a Harvard. I don't know how Harvard it is, but I do suspect New England. Are you from New England? I am not. You're not from New England. That's five down and five to go. And uh, went to Harvard, Mr. Mr. Rundemeyer. I will not ask him if he went to Harvard. Uh, why should I? Uh, Arlene so far has misled me on everything, and, and you're no help either. Uh, is your work in the entertainment field on the stage itself rather than in the rest of the theater? In other I... words, I'm trying to find out whether you're a performer as opposed to a man who does lighting or uh, stage sets. Is your work in, on the stage itself? I am not in the legitimate theater. You're not. Oh. That's six down and four to go. Dr. Hoffman. Have you a college degree? No. That's seven down and three to go. Governor Hoffman. Uh, have you anything to do with music? In my work, yes. Uh, are you a playwright? No. Eight down and two to go. Miss Francis. I still have a feeling about his voice, and it's driving me mad. Uh, I thought you, you uh, might all have a feeling uh, about his voice. <laughs> have you ever been married? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes! Has <laughs> um, he been divorced? I tell you, I know that. I know you that. You know that voice very well. The voice is driving me. And it's not pinsel. Uh, 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 um, Take it was easy. your father a very important man? <laughs> Yes, he was. Oh, well. you, you know, do you, shall we take it? Because maybe we have no consultation. No consultation. Um, Let's drive to a finish. All now. right, well, will you take a chance with me? We've got a few I will, left. I will do. Did you ever sell Christmas trees? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Did he? Yes. Are you Elliot Roosevelt? Yes. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Before you go, Mr. Roosevelt. <laughs> As our mystery celebrity, we are going to give you we are going to give you all the prize money, and will you tell us what your favorite charity is, so that we can send a check for fifty dollars in your name to your favorite charity? I would like to make uh, this donation to the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. The donation will be made in your name, and thanks a lot for being our guest on What's My Life. Now, our next challenger to face the panel. Uh, will you sign in, please? Write in nice, large letters. The panel isn't doing very well tonight. We have to help them as we can. Karen Archer. Miss Karen Archer, will you come here and stand beside me for a moment, please, and tell us, first of all, where you live. New York City. New York City. After what you've seen of the panel tonight, you can't be afraid of them. No. So would you walk over there and let them get a closer look at you? Any reasonable demands they make, why you exceed them? I have no demand. Oh, no demand. No demand. Uh, Mr. Archer, would you stand and face the audience, the studio audience? <laughs> no wolf call submitted. Miss Archer, will you come yeah. here and sit down? No reaction at all. <laughs> that was just Dr. Hoffman. Well, now, now so that our viewers at home can join fully in this particular one of our games, this challenger's occupation is not going to be revealed to them. So we go now right to the wild guesses. The panel gets the wild guess on the basis of uh, your handwriting, what you said, how you said it, and the close look they got at you. Governor Huffman, will you please begin the wild guess? I think Miss Archer is a model. You think Miss Archer is a model? Miss Francis? I'm afraid I have to go along with uh, Governor Huffman. Uh, Mr. Andermeyer? Third assistant librarian in Jackson Heights. <laughs> Jackson Heights. Dr. Dr. Huffman? A babysitter. A babysitter. <laughs> what lucky baby. babies this world would have then. Now, I'm afraid you're all wrong, and so we're going to move from the particular to the general. I will tell you that uh, Miss Archer is salary, and uh, I think once again, Miss Francis, you can begin the question. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Are you uh, uh, in the... Um, uh, uh, do you deal in uh, services? Yes. Uh, do you work with several other people, or do you work alone? Uh, well, now that's a little difficult for Miss oh. Archer. Do you mean while she's actually purveying her services, does she work alone or with a lot of other people or with other another person? I mean, you are ask the group the of people? Again? May I ask the question? Again? Yes, if you uh, will. Are there a group of people in the office that you do your work with? Are there other um, people employed in the same job you have for the same boss? 
Yes. Uh, do you deal directly with the, the consumer of your services? Yes. You? Yes. yes. Uh, do you have to go from where you are to these people in order to deliver the services? No. That's one down and nine to go. And Mr. Undermeyer, you're next. The people come to you. Yes. Why not? People. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Francis, please. Blame them, maybe. They are people of both sexes? Yes. You're not sure about the sexes? I mean, you can tell uh, them apart. <laughs> I mean, when they come I in, you can I think your question's been answered, Mr. Undermeyer. She says yes, very dubiously. Well, she uh, can be dubious if she, she wants to be. But do they include children? Well, sometimes. Well, you know, children, they're the smaller they, adults. Well, no, not generally. Not, not generally. generally, but we'll allow you to continue with your question. Uh, they deal, deal with people. We've got you about three minutes to in go. A, in a therapeutic sense, that is, do you do them, do you do them? <laughs> no. no, I'm afraid we'll have to take the no answer for that. That's two down and eight to go, and it's Dr. Hoffman on the block. Well, Karen, does your work depend upon a talent? Well, yes. Say yes. And behind that talent, is that training? Yes. And uh, do you make people feel better as a result of your work? Enthuse them? Yes. And... Uh, is, uh, does it depend? Does your work depend upon your being in good health at all times in every way? I mean, for instance, if you had a bad cold or if you had a broken arm, you couldn't do your work. Yes, that's right. Uh, we have to move into this. We've got about a minute and a half, Doctor Hoffman. Do you sing? No. That's three down and seven to go, Governor Hoffman. You take over. Do you work in a business organization? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you say people come to you and. From then, do you direct them? Are you a receptionist? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. I have to review whether she went to people's homes. I've forgotten No, they came, they, they came, came before and it wasn't right. no, She does not go to people's homes. Do you make arrangements for uh, people uh, in any way that uh, uh, would be in a, not a party sense, but perhaps something that you arrange for them to do in their homes? No. No, we'll call that a no. It's five down, five to go. We have only about 35 what seconds, so I'll just one guess at a time. Uh, Mr. Rondemeyer, Have you yes. anything to do with the arts? No. Uh, well, I have to take yes for that. Dr. Hoffman. I pass to the governor. Governor Hoffman. Photographer. Photographer, no. no. Six down, four to go. Miss Francis. Decorator? No. Three down, seven to go. Or rather, seven down, three to she go. She teaches dancing. Go. She teaches <laughs> dancing is right. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much for being our guest, and you have won yourself this actor's $35. Thanks for being a guest on What's My Line. Well, congratulations, panel. You came through in the, the stretch, as we used to say in the racing world, very handsomely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our time is up for this evening. So, until two weeks from tonight, when we'll try to see how good we are at spotting the occupations of still new challenges, this is John Daly saying, Good night, Dr. Hoffman. Good night, Louis. And good night, Arlene. Arlene. I, I want to say <laughs> Good night, Governor Hoffman. <laughs> good night, and good night, John Daly. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs>